Yeah. 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 Good afternoon. Welcome to a workshop with the joint meeting of the Redevelopment Authority and the Parks Board here to talk about uh, the Boatworks property and the Riverwalk project. I'm Alan Davis, Community Development Director. Uh, also up here would be Ray Maurer, the Parks Director. We'll both be able to uh, explain what's going on and answer your questions. Uh, the purpose of the meeting tonight is to talk about the good news we got from DNR regarding additional grant funds. Uh, we want to find out uh, what you guys think about possible uses of those grant funds for the Riverwalk and other uh, improvements, public improvements in and around the Boatworks property. Is that about right, Mr. Maurer? Good. And I got a little slideshow I'm going to show people. And everybody, does everybody have a handout? Get a handout back there. We've got some at the table here. Snuck in. No problem. <laughs> All right. Uh, the first handout here, and I'm talking about the Boatworks property. That would be in this corner right here. If you recall, we worked on the North Shore for the last two or three years. Uh, that we finished last year, and we started the, the other piece on the Steiger Park uh, last year as well. Uh, for this coming year, we, got, we have grant funds to work on the Boatworks property, which is in this location. And looking at this plan, back in 2005 when the city adopted this plan, uh, the Boatworks property included a, a, a boat ramp, it included a parking lot, it included some park improvements, uh, as well as an improvement to the whole the old marina at the at the at the Boatworks property. That's changed over time based on some environmental factors and some costs that have come uh, come to pass on this property. I'll give you some more specifics on that. Uh, here's the property. And there was a redevelopment of the marina originally planned. Uh, the boat launch was right here at the very end where the uh, ATC power lines are, and we couldn't build a boat launch underneath the power lines. Uh, we've looked at different alternatives. Another thing that uh, came to pass is that we got the cost estimate for dredging the old <coughs> marina, and that came into uh, two to four million dollars worth of dredging costs. So we didn't think we'd be able to. Uh, uh, financially afford the the dredging for that uh, old marina site uh, and as time has gone by we've looked at different alternatives for the redevelopment of the boatworks property where the city's torn down the most of the old buildings uh, and as well as the Geldwin property here it still says it's Geldwin but since that time this this building's actually been removed and uh, these buildings uh, have not been built that is still part of the Geldwin property but that's where they've been parking Oshkosh Corp vehicles I think I got some photos of that coming up. If you have any questions, just chime in and I'll try to answer them there. That's what's left at the Boatworks property. We still have the, the old docks and one of the old buildings right here that's over the water. Uh, that's the island that's uh, revegetated, some of the upland that's still left. That's what it looks like. There's the mass from the marina days. Oh, let me go back to that one. We also, this is where we've parked the portals from the uh, railroad bridge that when they uh, took the, the railroad bridge apart, they, they gave us those two portals that say 1899 over the entrances. That's where they're parked right now is right there by that mast. You can see all the buildings that used to be there and some of the, the parking at Geldwin. Uh, now that site is uh, green. That's that site right there at this corner right there. That little <coughs> white building right there is the one that's over the water there at the marina. So we've torn down all those buildings and <coughs> now we cut the grass. Uh, I mentioned the Steiger Park project. That was the one that goes from Wisconsin Avenue Bridge over <coughs> to the fishing pier. This is what it looked like before and this is what we did uh, last year to complete that. And that's just another view of those improvements that's leading up to this location with the river walk behind the community foundation over to the Wisconsin Avenue Bridge, which is one of those new bridges that you can go underneath the, the bridge uh, to connect over to Fox Valley Tech and the Senior Center. The fishing pier, we put on the, the new uh, railing and the new uh, boards. And that's kind of before it all grew up. And we also have a 
one idea of what the possible redevelopment of the Jeldwin property could look like. There's residential in general to the west and commercial over to the Oregon Street side. And they kind of show the river walk going along the, the edge of the river with different ideas for different types of residential buildings. Here's the Boatworks property way over there to the far left <laughs> on the west side. And at this point in time, the river walks plan includes, uh, here's the, the, the entrance at the river. Here's the island in the center. Right now, the project, the Steiger Park River Walk ended right here at the fishing pier. Here's the fishing pier going out there. All these other dash lines or elevation lines, it kind of makes it a little convoluted. Uh, but at this point in time, we'd take the uh, trail and we'd run it along right here. And then uh, our plan is to put a bridge span across from this shore over to the island. And then from that island, again, over to the uh, shore on the east side and that have two spans and an observation deck right in the middle on the island but to get that height to go across there the the Coast Guard uh, said that since it's a navigable water they were requiring the lowest point of the bridge to be 12 and a half feet above the water so to get the height necessary to get above the water we needed to uh, make a gentle enough swing to the whole project to meet ADA requirements that we ended up having to put a swing, a circle type of thing that you see at, say, clover leaves, where you uh, are doing on and off ramps. It's got to be gentle enough for the vehicles to run. And in this case, ADA accessibility to get up to that level. And then on this side, it can go straight down to the, to the ground. It doesn't need a loop. So that's the basic project. And if that's all we did, it would be pretty easy to understand uh, at this point in time. Uh, one thing, since we're not building the, the, the motorboat launch, uh, the DNR, I guess, uh, decided that they, we couldn't use that money that they gave us for removing those last pieces of uh, the marina. They said they'd, they couldn't, we couldn't spend that money there, but they have reallocated those funds to Rainbow Park. So uh, when Mr. Maurer gets to the point of uh, doing something with the boat launches at Rainbow Park, he's got about $222,000 of grant money to use for that. And I think uh, the 363000 that they've offered the city uh, here for this project, the LawCon and RTA, uh, at a minimum, we're looking at paying for the uh, loop connection up to the bridge. And everything beyond that uh, on the list uh, is, is yet to be decided. Uh, we... To use this, the, the project would come on in under budget for the city what, that we have with grant funds and CIP funds. Uh, in fact, we'd have uh, more than enough for <clears throat> contingency. But we don't maximize the $363,000 worth of grant funds. We only use about one hundred dollars or $175,000 worth of those grant funds. So we're almost leaving $200,000 on the table from DNR. And if we want that, we have to match that with funds. And that's what we can talk more about. Uh, let me finish with that. So here's the here's my scratching on that previous project. Here's the loop. Here's the bridge. Here's another bridge. Here's the ramp coming down. So I labeled this Riverwalk Trail. That's from right there to right there. There's still all the fishing piers and the old boat house and more fishing piers to remove. Uh, that still is going to cost us about two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars to remove. Uh, the connection is located right here, and then, and I labeled it the connection right there. That's that loop piece right there. The other five pieces, uh, we don't have to do, or we could do them. That would be uh, starting here on the north side, a playground potentially, a restroom or shelter inside the loop, a parking lot, uh, a kayak launch. Since we're not going to dredge this area out, we still could la launch canoes or kayaks because there's a foot or two of water. And lastly, there's a uh, plan for a sidewalk connection from the river walk that ends about right here all the way down to 4th Street where it would again reconnect to the neighborhood sidewalks there at Michigan and uh, 4th. Hey, yes, Mr. Hammond. The most expensive part of this South Shore River Walk has got to be the bridges, correct? Probably. I would say the bridges are expensive. Uh, I don't. Has there been any 
any discussion of possibly looking to the private sector for naming rights of the bridges to help offset some of the costs? We've had initial discussions about that, but we haven't actually made a formal request for anything like that. Uh, I'd like to see that brought up in discussion, maybe through the Parks Board or even through the RDA that they're taking on this project, uh, because I think that that's a good possibility. I, you know, I would think some of the entrepreneurs in the Oshkosh area wouldn't mind having a bridge named after them, or a restroom named after them, or any other parts of the project. Because we were able to do the North Shore pretty much on um, grants and mm -hmm. budgeted CIP dollars, correct? Correct. So this would just be probably the more expensive side of the river if you want to call it that. Well, uh, at least this piece seems to be an expensive piece. And unfortunately, the further we go towards the east, the latest budget numbers are probably 40 or 50 percent higher than we, we thought they were when we started the project. Okay. Just... That idea out there. Glad it's been talking. Yes, Mr. Cummings. Alan, as you know, the day we went through there a couple of years ago, we tore the prop off my boat because it's so shallow. But yep, right here. How is there any prediction how long before that is totally silted and just muck? That even make it difficult for kayaks and canoes to be launched? I've not heard that, but that's a good question because that has over the years silted up. I've been told it's as it's been as deep as eight or ten feet, but it's no more than two feet at this point in time. Would Mr. Tim have any guesses, to the engineer in the room? I would love to give you an answer, but I have no clue, to be honest. That's, right now it's pretty status and what's happening out there. I don't see it significantly changing rapidly. I mean, that's about the best we can come up with. And then I, I think I wanted to do a quick segue into the possible costs for the pieces that we may want to add to the project. Like I said, at, a, at the bare minimum, we'd take $175,000 of this new grant, and we could do everything we were planning on doing with building the bridge across here. We'd build the connection, <coughs> and we would demo all the last structures on the boatworks property and we'd come in under budget and we'd use about $175,000 of the new grant funds. Uh, the other projects that would match the Riverwalk plan that I touched on at the very beginning regarding a restroom shelter facility, that would be about $270,000. Sidewalk connection to 4th, that would be about $20,000. The parking lot, about $150,000. Uh, the kayak canoe launch with uh, another uh, small parking lot, 100000 And the playground there in the loop, about 60000 The 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 restroom and shelter in, kind of in the loop or in the connection, uh, about the only time you're going to be able to build that very easily would be uh, as part of this project because once the loop is built, it would be very problematic to build that structure once it's enclosed on all, all four sides. And Mr. Maurer and I have sat down uh, with other staff and the engineer to kind of review these alternatives as to what could be done. Uh, we, we have about $125,000 left in contingency for the Riverwalk project. And, of course, that we could use as leverage for more DNR funds. So that in theory, we'd have $250,000 more funding towards any mixture of those projects. Uh, but we certainly don't have to do that. If we wanted to build everything that would maximize the grant funds, not only would I have to use the contingency, I'd also need to uh, get about $63,000 in additional <coughs> funds in 2015. <coughs> And the RDA has expressed concerns over the, over the years regarding how the Boatworks property would be rebuilt or redeveloped. And I guess at, the, at this point, I'd give Mr. Maurer an opportunity to talk maybe a little bit about the, the vision for the improvements there at the Boatworks property. And then I think we need to open it up a little bit to the a conversation with you guys to see what the pluses and, and advantages and disadvantages of each alternative would be. Thanks, Alan. Um, as Mr. Davis said, we sat down with his planning division staff and brainstormed about some different improvements that could be made to this area. 
Um, we have heard in the Parks Board members that are here can attest that they would like to see a restroom facility on the South Shore. Um, we felt that um, we wanted to have some type of a structure, not portable toilets, because the, the river walk is such an um, exclusive thing to Oshkosh that we wanted to make sure that we did have some type of facilities on the South Shore. Whether or not this is the location, um, it's an opportune location. I think it's going to be heavy use based on the potential development on the, the Geldwin site with the, um, the residential coming in there. So the restroom shelter, I think, would be a positive. The playground, um, what we looked at again was the number of residential um, and families that we expect to be in the new development, that this would be more of a neighborhood park, that a playground might make sense in this area. We also looked at this as potentially being um, an area, um, not a trailhead, but an area that might be a little more heavily used if there is a canoe and kayak launch in that area. Again, just looking at the opportunity based on the depth of the water in that area, we thought it might be um, a viable um, recreational asset. There is the possibility of receiving grant funding for that canoe and kayak launch. We're working with um, a regional group that is um, trying to have ADA accessible kayak and canoe launches throughout the Fox River cor corridor. Sidewalk connection, as Alan stated, it, it just makes sense to have that connection to the residential area. Um, and with the more amenities we add, the more parking lot and parking spaces we felt we would need to take a look at. Any questions at this point? Any park board members have any questions or comments or any feeling on what you've seen so far? It is your first look at it as well, so. I, I, I like the uh, canoe and kayak launch. I, I was hoping that there would be somewhere, uh, one of those somewhere along the, the mm -hmm. I'd like to see that stay in the project. <clears throat> I think the plan looks really good. I, mean, I, I really like it. I like the trail connection, you know, the, the kayak and canoe launch. The you know the uh, parking would, you know, really be beneficial. Um, and the, the restroom would be a good idea, like you said, on that on that part. And if a playground would work out, I think that'd be fine. But uh, I, I like I like the idea. Okay, I'm um, still trying to work through the numbers. Here. Um, and as, as I would interpret them, if, if we went all the way to the maximum and got the additional $63,000 in city match, I guess, in 2015, when, or part of the CIP there, that um, of the, if we pull out 175000 out of the 363 coming from DNR, that would mean that there would be 188,000 remaining from the DNR, um, which we then would need to match. Mm -hmm. So that would give us $378,000 total there. Now, um, all of the projects here, uh, you know, far exceed the 378. So you know, is our task uh, to try to work within that 378,000 uh, figures <coughs> right now? Because if, if, if we say we like everything, we're you know, over 500,000. Uh, Correct. Uh, all I'm looking for yeah. tonight is the best way to spend potentially the 363 in grant funds. So that's as far as I took it. If right. the Parks Board or the RDA would want to say, no, we do want all the improvements, then we'd have to come up with a financing plan for, like you said, over half a million dollars worth of improvements, which I haven't, we haven't gone through. Yeah. But the timeliness is the grant funds are only available for about another month, and if we don't use them, they're going to have to pass those on to another community. Uh, so time is a little more of the essence on the decision for the, for the 363. Is that right, Ms. Brandt? <coughs> Um, just, just a couple of issues. You know, I think the the uh, argument for the restroom shelter is probably pretty pretty strong. You know, given the, the whole totality of the of the walkover on on that side, I, I don't think that the argument for a hundred thousand for the kayak <coughs> canoe launch uh, is nearly as uh, defensible, nice as it is. Um, 
The other consideration uh, is, do any of these projects have an impact on, uh, you know, other commercial or residential development in the area? And uh, how would these kinds of things uh, affect uh, other development possibilities to the, uh, you know, I guess that's to the north uh, uh, along the river or even to the east uh, right. coming there? Do we have any indication about what that impact would be? <coughs> I expect the area to the east to be a residential yeah. type of redevelopment, and well, they'd typical be happy or neighborhoods, the, they yeah. they certainly wouldn't. They prefer not to have a motorboat launch. That I that I've heard right. before. Uh, the anything that would probably make noise or attract mm -hmm. more noise, I think that would be an issue for the. The residential mm -hmm. properties there to the east. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a good sense for potential usage or attendance at this since uh, we've not really examined it all that closely. Let me ask Mr. Maurer uh, a question. Um, given your uh, experience with the, the north end of the Menominee Park plan, I attended the advisory committee meeting the night of the discussion there. Do you have any uh, concerns about reaction to the restroom shelter uh, option here? No, I, I really think that the trail users would look forward to having a facility what on the South Shore. What trail users um, in, the, in the neighborhood? I really don't. I, I really see this as a neighborhood park and um, mm -hmm. I think at Menominee Park there was a concern about blocking views. You're really not going to be blocking any views from what I understand if there is residential that's built okay. from the east um, and as and Mr. Davis stated we are um, working closely with the potential development of that site to minimize things that would discourage residential or customers potential customers for the the developers okay so you just don't see them in an analogous situation I do not hey, uh, up to the northwest where you know it says connection playground that is basically commercial in there, isn't it, right now? That's commercial buildings? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's the foundation. There's a um, probation office there, dentist facilities. Okay, so there wouldn't be much impact there. That's correct. I know that as from the park side of it, we do need another, you know, shelter and restroom, you know, to rent out. Uh, so... You know, we could do that. Yep. As far as a canoe and kayak launch, yeah, I think I think the idea is a really good idea, Ellen. I'm not sure what your plan looks like. You know, you know, I've canoed my whole life and everything, and most people that canoe and kayak are used. You know, it's kind of tough sometimes mm -hmm. the launches and fairly primitive a lot of times. But I think, you know, I think that could be done for a lot less money and, and still put it in, you know, you know, just something, a minimal thing where you can pull a car, a couple, a car or two in, unload your canoe or kayak, a simple, real simple launch, and then move it to the main parking lot or something would be fine. And I think you could accomplish that. If, if money is a big issue, I think you could accomplish that for a lot, you know, a lot less money potentially. And Paul can maybe speak to this from ACOM, but that $100,000 includes the parking, but also making sure that any inclines or declines going down it's ADA accessible because we'd like to make it an ADA accessible canoe launch so in order to do that there's certain things that need to be taken into consideration Paul I believe it's thirty thousand dollars to put in one of the ADA accessible thirty five thousand for the ADA thirty five thousand for the launch itself but then you're looking at having a hard surface down to that that act or that um, launch as well as the parking the parking was another do you call what the number the was of it, yeah. the balance so $65,000 worth is parking. And like I said, you know, a lot of places you, you know, you just want a place to get your canoe or kayak there, a little simple little loading zone, temporary parking, unload your stuff. Once you're, you know, once you've got it there, you can pull it over to the main parking lot, which is probably a lot of parking, you know, if you wanted to save money. I mean, that, that's just a potential. You know. Mr. Cummings? Uh, what I like about it is I, I, a lot of the cities I visited recently, the older cities that have been built on obviously what rivers and so forth and the industrials all gone they are converting or dedicating a lot of this land to parks and I, I think that's that's just a 
it has a major impact on the community and I think the quality of life of the community are the parks and I think this is a perfect use of that, that piece of land. It seems to be following what older cities are doing. Older industrial cities. Yeah, I, I agree and I like a lot of the concepts here. Again, my, my concern is one time when we were looking at this property, we were thinking that this might be build some tax base around here. We were looking at the boat works. So I was getting into a lot of this in the very beginning by looking at this because we might get private development and our investment within the city would be less. We've moved it now to a point where we're all talking about public funding here. Because uh, a lot of these things are nice to have parks, but you're taking land away and we aren't getting any, any revenue. And as we look to the future, we've got to think about the dollar side. I just hope that when we think about this whole thing, we think of it in a wider context of how we might attract some private, more private development or some private dollars into some aspects of it. The point that was raised before, and again, uh, naming the bridge and others, because it's really about dollars in the end. Because uh, we can come up with some great concepts here and just keep adding dollars on and more things. It'll be nice to have, but if there's no, if there's no base to cover it or we don't have some kind of a, a wider view of how this is going to benefit us and some economic I just hope we keep the broad perspective out there. Obviously, with Jelwin being taken over, that's a change from what we thought <coughs> might happen. Uh, I don't know how soon that's going to be developed on this, on this side of Oregon. So, because right now the focus seems to be on the other side, which is. So I just hope we just think about a, the broadest perspective we can have in any ways that we can bring in private, some private dollars to help us out either in some way, shape, or form. And by adding value to the community and being able to sell that as an added value to the community, other than nice to have more parks in that, it, which is great for quality of life. But we're dealing with dollars. And I, I, we've had some brief discussions on that because this is all very new to us, just with the, the timing of the grant funding. Right. Uh, Obviously, we would look at phasing. The phasing would give us some potential to raise donations or funding. Um, we determine if the restroom is the priority, let's get that constructed because it is sensitive to now when the river walk goes in and maybe that is the top priority and all these other ones come in as grant dollars or, or donations. Right, because somebody, nobody wants to go out and spend money on a, on a restroom. That's what we found out years ago down at the, down at the leach. <laughs> we had to, to do that. So I, I just hope we just keep this, this broader perspective at mind and just you know, <laughs> all wonderful we got to figure out some way in the long run about how we can make this more economically feasible for us I just wanted to add one follow-up and then we got a couple more questions the the Bulwark's property still right down here is where we've I planned for private development uh, at this point in time the sanitation garage is this location as well and that pro that building's probably going to have to come down to even get this property to be redeveloped as well, so that this is not the, the be all and end all of what we're going to have to do to that site. And there's probably remediation we're going to have to pay for on that site as well, in addition to removing or demolishing what's already there. So that this is just a little piece of the bigger project. And I think you were alluding to that that there's a lot of development there's to the east on the Jeldon property that could have a huge impact on what happens right there and and builds tax base and oh yes it's right there well, mr. Cummings what, what in theory what this should do too <coughs> it will increase the value of the, the homes in that neighborhood and that's a very modest neighborhood in, in decline and I think it's going to attract new development because it's a nice amenity to have <coughs> in the neighborhood so I think there, there's a lot of positives to a whole neighborhood when something like this goes in with since there's going to be no boat, motor boats coming into that water area there, why not? Why do away with the bridges and just connect it to the south? And you're still walking around the water and use that money someplace else. When we did our original cost estimates, we looked at those alternatives, and okay. cutting across the, the water was the cheapest alternative. Uh, the thing that probably made it more costly is the Coast Guard saying we had to get it up to 12 and a half feet not we were planning on putting it down at about three feet above the water but they said it had to be at 12 and a half feet uh, mr. Tim is there anything that you'd want to add to the cost estimate for going any alternative when we're looking at an opinion of probable cost for Riverwalk it comes down to lineal feet 
And if you measure the lineal feet to get all the way around the boat yard and back, um, it was more lineal feet than the bridge. Mm -hmm. So we did a cost comparison. The other thing that comes in, and now the, we thought the bridge, although it'll be elevated, will be less use less land for the possible development along the river or along the shoreline there. So we're keeping some more separation. So those are the two big ideas why the bridge. Okay. The bridge also is more of icon look for the river walk. It's going to stand out. Okay. And, and I think one of the other considerations of running through here is we were going to have to do remediation on the pieces that we excavated, and that was going to drive up the costs of going to the south side. So the bridge actually ended up to be the cheaper version, and it seemed to provide the most developable land uh, in the long term. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Clark. Two questions. The first one is um, the restroom shelter, would that be big enough that we could be renting it out and use that? portion of the property as a small revenue generator? We, we haven't got into those discussions on the park board level yet, but hearing some of the park board members saying they'd like to see it rented out, um, the cost estimates that we used came from the recent shelter at Menominee Park. We wouldn't see it being that big. It would probably be about half that size, so maybe about a four picnic table or a three picnic table type shelter. Again, we're looking at a neighborhood park, so we don't want to have large numbers of people coming in to rent the facility. And my next question is, where is the nearest neighborhood park to this particular facility? Steckbauer. Steckbauer, which is at 6 in Idaho. Otherwise, I'm thinking Red Arrow. Um, there's not. And then, South, and then South Park, pretty much, right? South Park, correct. Yeah. So this would be something that would be useful for walking distance for that entire neighborhood to the south. Correct. Yes, Quick comment to, to Burke's point. If you look at how this is going to join in now, the, the land on the east side of, or sorry, west side of Geldwin now will connect on that bridge. So you can walk across the bridge, walk across the other bridge, and connect to the whole Wyawash trail system just for this little connector versus not having any way to get there. Um, so, I, so I support the plan um, almost as is. I, I was originally skeptical on the restroom and shelter, but it sounds like most of you all are, are, are pretty much on that. Uh, as far as the kayak dock, I kayak 100 days a year, so I know exactly what you need, and all you need is a four-foot by four-foot flat piece. So it, it's not that we need ADA compliant if we don't have to be ADA compliant for the kayak entrance. We I mean, have to be. But did you say there's potentially some money available if we went yes. in that direction? You can pay for That's correct. There's money if we can, sure. any dollars we could leverage and accomplish something. You can pay for most of it, sure. Otherwise, you can do it. $10,000 right. structure. Right. No, no, I agree. The island, is that, will we allow public <clears throat> access to the island and how big is it? Is it big enough to do anything on it? It's not big enough to do anything on it, and we're going to have railing, so we're not encouraging people to go onto the island. There's a viewing platform designed yes. on the top there. To overlook it. Yep, that square right DNR there. Yep. and Army Corps is very protective of the vegetation on that island. <laughs> Any other comments? How many parking right. stalls are in the, in the parking area? Uh -uh. Count them. So it pretty much would be a neighborhood park, so basically. What will be under the power lines? At, right, right now it's all a gravel spot? Well, uh, let's see. The, the connector, the okay. connection is under the power lines okay. right now. Uh, I expect the parking lot would be. I'm. How about that restroom? Do you, Just yeah. missing it. I, we, we did that on purpose to stay outside the easement. I clean that hole. It looks like a wasteland there right now, so 
Correct. And there's some more details on there. We had some trees. We're looking at landscaping the area. That's what's driving some of these costs and the smaller details. Um, now, and none of this has I, been bid out. This is just an estimate of cost. I mean, these numbers could come in most likely lower, but they could come in higher as well. All right. Well, oh, Mr. Roloff. Yeah, Alan, uh, there is an item on the agenda tomorrow night for a partial award of this. Oh, thank you. Yes. So, yeah, where we're the next steps? Really, I wanted to go where the next steps are going to be, but obviously that's, yep. that's a big portion that is already on the council's agenda. If we do nothing and just accept the bare basic grant, uh, we'll build the river walk with the connection and the bridges and call it good, and we'll be able to come in under budget and use some of the extra grant money. Uh, however, there is a timeliness issue when it comes to actually building this. To fabricate these spans of the bridge, we need about four to six months lead time, so I'll be asking the council to award the partial bid just for the spans uh, at tomorrow night's council meeting, and then once we figured out exactly what we're going to be doing with this and this and then everything else on the property, then I'd be able to come back in February to award the rest of the bid for the Riverwalk project. Uh, so there's going to be at least two phases, two steps. One is for the, the spans for tomorrow night, and then the, the rest of the project will be in February when we do have those bids at this point, but we don't want to jeopardize the $175,000 grant funds by awarding this before the DNR has given us a grant contract because then we can't use that grant money. So the timing has to be exactly right that we'll only award this section once we have the grant fund contract signed. And... If that includes this piece plus whatever other pieces, we'll have to bring those back to the city council to also mm -hmm. approve as bids. Uh, there, there won't be bid alternates. There'll have to be amendments or, or change orders in the future. Alan, just so you know, everybody's kind of understanding, you, you feel pretty confident that they're going to get the grant, but in the event we didn't get the grant, what are we, we're only going to do the, the bridge, which is on the agenda tomorrow night, and the connection, and that'll pretty much be it for the time being. Is that, is that a fair statement? Yes. I would say we're going to get at least $175,000 of the new 363 grant because that way we build everything just for the river walk and we don't have to change anything with the city's CIP. As soon as we start adding on to that, then we have to start using either CIP dollars we have budgeted this year or 2015 CIP dollars. So going to the other extreme, if we were to get the grant and we wanted to be very ambitious and go through that, we have a million and a half dollars budgeted this year of city money. Is that, correct. Is, that, is that correct? Yes. So we're trying to leverage that million five, but the extra money that we would need to dip into, and what we're kind of saying is if, if this goes forward, would we need to commit to additional funds in 2015? Yes. And if so, what is that number, just so everybody walks away understanding that? It might be good to give them a summary later on as we as this evolves a little more. For grant purposes, it's going to be the number I included in the memo. <coughs> I'm trying to find out where that is. To max out the grant dollars, I believe I need $63,000 in 2015 dollars, and that's just to maximize the grant. That doesn't build everything, because then I'll probably need another $350,000 to build everything that's on this board. So that would be 63 just to use all the grant funds up for projects. It's the another 350000 so in rough terms, about $400,000 in grant of 20 and 2015 CIP funds that we'd commit to. As we get closer to that, I think it'd be appropriate. I haven't heard. I'm surprised. It, I'm surprised some of my council members haven't already said it. But we're going to need that type of summary with the different scenarios, depending on what. There's a lot of what ifs at this point. I think there'll probably be too many for you to try to summarize. But as we get closer, uh, a good financial summary might help everybody. Mm -hmm. And we might have better numbers, a better understanding of what these other projects may cost as well. Thanks, Alan. One other quick comment. If you remember, Little Oshkosh was built in Menominee Park, all with um, service clubs, volunteer dollars, volunteer workers. 
that this this might be an opportunity for something like that? I'm pounding a hammer. More than a rhetorical statement, right, Tom? <laughs> I remember pounding a hammer. Even me. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, thank you for your time and attendance. And yep. Parks Board will start at 6 o'clock. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> 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 <laughs>